Yes, you guys, welcome back. I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Lion TV, and today I'm here to bring you guys another news daily video. Now, for today's stories, I'm going to focus on the latest surrounding Ben Shiro, Declan Rice, Tagular Fico, Kepper, and Onana news as well. So, we definitely have a ton of things to speak about in today's video. But before I get into things, you guys, I want to quickly say thank you to each and every single one of you for showing me so much support over these past four years as I've recently reached 100,000 subs. Now, if I'm going to keep things absolutely real, I still feel the same from when I had 90,000, 80,000, 50,000, even 10,000. I guess the size has never been the biggest motivator for me. What's always been a motivation for me is giving you guys quality content, you know. When it comes to breaking the news stories first for you guys, that's what I like to do. When it comes to giving you insightful, considered thoughts, objective thoughts that aren't reactionary, that aren't looking to just uh, profit off reaction, which tends to happen time and time again in today's YouTube world. You know, I want to be that content creator you guys can trust and rely upon. And the fact that I've got 100,000 of your support it really means a lot to me, it really does. And um, it feels like from this point on, it's a massive motivator to really push my craft and my content and take things to bigger heights. It's time for me to maybe work on my confidence even more to start producing the content for you guys that I definitely think your support deserves. So honestly, it really does mean a lot, you guys. Honestly, it does. And without wasting no more time, we start with the first story today. And that's the latest news surrounding Ben Chilwell from Leicester C. Now, this story was first broken by Nazar Kinsella from Goal.com, and this article was pretty interesting. It does state that we are only prioritizing Ben as the only left back we want to sign in this window, and we're actually hoping that Ben can put some pressure on Leicester City to allow him to leave. Now, what's quite interesting is that Leicester City have actually rejected an inquiry we made to actually sign Ben in installments over a few years. Now, Leicester are completely entitled to do what they want. He's their player, he's their asset. But as this report does continue on, it does reveal some very interesting things. It states that Emerson and Alonso could be kept for another season because Lampard only wants Ben as his new left back. I mean, I've definitely got some thoughts with that, you guys. But to end the article, Ben's contract does expire in 2024. Now, here's the part where I give you guys my thoughts and opinions. To start off with, I do feel like Leicester City are extremely notorious to deal with. We can never forget that. Let's not forget that they're the same club that kept Riyad Mahrez for two extra seasons longer than the player actually wanted to be there because they never got the valuation they wanted for the player. Last season, they sold Harry Maguire to United for a world record fee for a defender. Leicester are a club that play hardball. They're notoriously difficult to negotiate with. And with this deal and this story, I see things going two ways. Let's say Ben's words do work and Leicester feel obliged to have to sell the player because he doesn't want to remain there. Let's say Leicester then get the valuation they want for him at around maybe 60 to 70 million, which I feel is going to be a massive stretch if you're asking me. Then I could see Leicester releasing Ben and actually selling him. I think they would do so knowing that right now in today's market, there are so many great top quality left backs available for less than half the money that if they sold Ben, this would effectively be an easy flip. And on the other hand, I could just see Leicester keeping Ben and saying no. I mean, it's not the first time they've done so. The news in this article that really got me thinking a lot was hearing that we could potentially keep Alonso and Emerson for another season. And my first immediate impressions were that if we did so, if we allowed their contracts to run down by another year and then sold them in the following season, in the following window, how much money can we command for their sales? I mean, let's not forget, by the time that period does come, Marcus Alonso is going to be 30 years old Emerson, if potentially Ben was signed to, would barely get any game time as well, meaning that his valuation would plummet as well. We wouldn't get the maximum amount of money we could get by selling these players if we saw them in today's window. And I personally don't understand why we'd have to keep both of them, knowing that if we sold Alonso or an Emerson right now, you're getting at least maybe 50 million for the sale of both players. I don't see why we'd have to keep both Alonso and Emerson if we couldn't sign Ben. When you consider that if you sold an Alonso for around 25 million, that money you earned could be gone straight back into signing a Tagler Fico who's costing less than that amount. What I find really risky too about this news is that, tactically, Alonso and Emerson haven't been the perfect additions I left back. In an Emerson's case, I'm not too sure what's happened to him this season. And in the case of Alonso, he suits best playing as a left wing back. Next season to fully support and accommodate our amazing attack, 
I feel like we need the proper left back to really balance that team in general. Now, when it comes to Ben, I've said this so many times, you guys know, I prefer Tagliafico. I've mentioned Tagliafico for over a year, for a very long time, consistently on this channel. At the same time, just because I prefer Tagliafico does not mean that I don't rate Ben, does not mean that I don't like him. And to be honest, if Lampard is really serious about only going to sign Ben, then I'm going to place my trust in Lampard. I mean, come on. I think by now, I think it's safe that we can put all our faith in Lampard. It's obvious that he knows what he's doing, but it seems like this Ben story won't die down anytime soon. So on this note, you guys, we now move on to the second story today, and that's the latest news surrounding Declan Rice that also came out not too long ago earlier today. Now, I'm not trying to toot my own horn here, but I have been telling you guys consistently for a very long time that West Ham are currently in a financial situation. The reason why I say this, you guys, is because today that very same news was released and that news was made public. So as I'm trying to stress, you know, when I do hear things, it's not some fake stuff I'm hearing. I'm really giving you guys the first scoop. Anyway, Nazar Kinsella also reported this story and he states that West Ham could be willing to actually sell Rice this window due to these financial difficulties. Now, the reporter Duncan Castles did state that Declan Rice has already told West Ham that he does want to go. But I can tell you guys with utmost 1000% assurances that this report actually was not accurate. Right now, Declan hasn't spoken to West Ham. He hasn't asked to leave them yet at this point in time. In the case of Declan, he really has a lot of respect with the West Ham fans. He really appreciates their support. He appreciates the club too, the people that gave him the opportunity to play in the Premier League and make his name in the first place. And if he was to leave, he wants to leave things in the best way possible and the most respectful way. So, you know, credit to Declan. So credit to Declan. I really like his mentality. I really like how mature he is too. He's very serious about his craft. He's serious about becoming the very best player he can be. And he's not someone that wants bad karma or bad blood coming his way. As I've been stressing to you guys, if this deal does get concluded, this most likely will be the longest deal to get done. As I've said for the longest time, Declan does want to sign for us. And right now, I think something could happen. But we have to wait and see how this window does develop. And now we move on to the final story today. And just to let you guys know, this story is going to be pretty long. It's going to be story after story. So make sure you guys are paying attention. Without wasting no more time, we start with things. And I'm going to start with the latest news surrounding Kepa. And I'm going to tell you guys exactly what I've been hearing behind the scenes. Now, in the case of Kepa, we know that Valencia are very interested in him. But at this point in time, things aren't looking too great. As I've been told, right now, the club don't feel very confident that they can find a great deal that actually allows Kepa to leave this club. Right now, there's a very strong possibility that Kepa could remain for next season. And it seems like the club actually do have some strategies in place that could potentially boost Kepa's valuation to actually make it easier to sell him in the not too distant future. Now, I'm gonna tell you guys some of the strategies that I've been hearing. One main strategy is to give Kepa the cup games and the UCL games for next season. Now, you might be thinking, why would we do that? The main reason for this, you guys, is that we wanna boost his valuation to entice suitors. Now, in the case of offering Kepa Champions League football, there is some sense behind this right now. And we know that Kepa has struggled domestically in this league. However, internationally, his reputation is not the same. If Kepa was to perform in UCL games, that could boost his valuation up and that could entice some foreign clubs to actually make some moves for Kepa. Now, due to this reality, it does seem like any moves for All Black might not be happening. However, that doesn't stop us from signing any other goalkeepers. And if anything, this is great news for Onana from Ajax. So as the club are looking to boost Kepa's valuation and entice some suitors to make moves, we're looking to sign an affordable goalkeeper alongside him for next season. Now you guys would have probably heard my theory so many times and the reason why I've always felt like this would be the most logical thing to do was because I understood that the price we paid for Kepa the contract length we gave Kepa as well. And we can't forget Kepa signed a seven year deal worth over 150K per week. Now you might be wondering to yourself, Nini, why did we give Kepa a seven year deal in the first place? It seems absolutely mad. We can't forget when you add the transfer fee of about 70 million plus his wages as well, Kepa costs around 141 million over those seven years. So by giving the player a longer contract, we could amortize his fee even better, basically making it about 20 million per year. 
Now this news leads us on very nicely to Onana and Tagliafico. Right now his price, which is set at around 30 million, is very attractive to the club. Now of course, you know, you guys had to ask my sources, what's your opinions? What's your subjective opinion on how you see this whole goalkeeping situation going? He told me in his opinion that he wouldn't be surprised if Marina was actually holding talks with Ajax over the possibility of signing both Tagliafico and Onana together in the same window. Because in that sense, you know, you could potentially bring the overall feed down, saving more money. And before I continue on you guys, I want to stress again, I asked my sources subjective opinion. This was not a fact, this is just based on his knowledge, his experience in this industry as well. And to take things forward you guys, this harkens back to a theory I've had for a long time now. I've always felt like with how expensive it's going to be to actually get rid of Kepa. You know, if you get rid of Kepa, you're either accepting that you're going to take a massive loss on a sale, or you accept that you have to fund his loan move by really subsidizing heavily his wages. So in that sense, I always felt like the best course of action was to keep Kepa for another season, sign an affordable goalkeeper, and have two goalkeepers competing against each other. At this point in time, it's already very well documented that Ajax have accepted and are very willing to sell Onana and Tagliafico in this window. If you're us, if you're considering signing your Benz, looking at your Oblacks, etc, etc, you don't have to prioritize these signings right now at this point in time because it's already obvious that these players are already free to leave and the only thing we'd have to do was place a bid for both of these players. Now I'm going to give you guys my personal opinion. I think we could sign both Onana and Tagliafico knowing that the money we'd save from signing both of them could be used to sign a Declan Rice from West Ham who I expect to be very difficult to negotiate with to actually sell him in the first place. I think Onana is a great goalkeeper. I think Onana is clear of Kepa. Um, I was reading some debates on social media and I was a bit surprised that people only see Onana as slightly better than Kepa. I mean, I was a bit baffled by that when you consider that Kepa's goalkeeping stats have been ranked the lowest domestically and internationally as well. You know, Onana is seen as one of the top 10 goalkeepers in Europe right now. 6'3", very young exceptional ball playing ability too and he steps up in big games with the Ajax fans really loving the goalkeeper and really praising him very highly so again you can't even compare Kepa and Onana Onana is clear of Kepa so um, I think he would be a great signing to make and I think his affordability would allow us to prioritize even more players to sign. You know, I'm looking at Declan, I'm looking at Ben Rama. But one thing I do know, you guys, is that this summer window is going to be one of the very best we've seen in God knows how many years. So, on that note, you guys, that's going to be me for today. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Emi FC. This is Blue Lions TV. I'll see you guys later with some more videos.